And so here, as I was saying, the the, um, the order of the canvases is is is, uh, is on the board on the on the slide here, and we're going to just follow that format um, going forward. So we're going to start with the first, which is problem. But I also like to bundle in customer segments. I see the two things going very hand in hand. And so what we're going to do here is list the top one to three problems. And I know that you know we all like have these very complicated products, but we want to distill it down to what we think is most vital, like what is the problem we're really trying to do. And I kind of cap that at three problems. So ideally, you want to get it down to just one core problem. So if you look at Google, for example, when they started out, they really had a very core problem, which was trying to, to solve the search problem. And even the way they launched their product was a very simple search bar. At the time they were doing this, many of the, their competitors were building full-on portals like Yahoo and, and really producing a lot of content and pushing a lot of content to people but they really wanted to nail that one problem first. And sure enough, over time, they've gone and become much like the, the other folks building multiple products. But trying to figure out what is that real compelling problem that customers have is what you want to do in this, this part of the exercise. The other thing below it, and I know there's no space on the tool yet, but I'll, I'll show you how I kind of annotate this piece, is I, I like to, under the problems that I have, list out the existing alternatives. And in a, in, a, in a future version of the tool, we're actually going to build some specific explicit places for these su sub editions. But the, the understanding or the idea here is to figure out for yourselves or make a guess at what the customers are doing today to solve those problems. And we're going to validate that through the interviews. So if you're building, and I'll show you an example here so you'll see what I mean. But you want to list out who your potential competition might be or what the alternatives are that customers have today. Um, for, for these problems that you have listed up, up there. And then on the customer segment box, we want to identify the user role. So we already have identified the customers we're, we're building this for. Below that, we want to identify any sub-user roles. So who are the other people in the ecosystem that make this product really work? Um, and then down below that, there's another sub-classification uh, for early adopters. I like to challenge people to go even one level deeper from the customer segment to see how can I really identify who my early adopters are going to be. Um, and that's where we want to start. And so I'll, I'll sh show that, I'll, I'll kind of illustrate that with this example here. So this is Cloudfire, the photo and video sharing example, which is targeted at parents with young kids. So that is the customer segment we're targeting here. So I would say that the, the first problem that, that I had observed is that sharing lots of stuff is time consuming. And one of the things that made it interesting once we had our first baby is that the amount of sharing that we, sorry, sorry, the amount of content that we were producing actually went up. So my wife and I were not very big. When we went on vacations, we'd take photos and videos, but not really, other than that, we had no reason to, to do this stuff. But all of a sudden, we were taking more pictures. We were actually starting to play around with video and wanted to share this. And then trying to share it, that's where some of the, some of the frustration came in, is the uploading process was painful. It was just time consuming stuff. The other, the, the other side to that is that once we had <clears throat> a, a baby, the amount of free time we had actually went down. So we, we became very time poor just by this new addition to the family. Before that, we had all the time in the world to do these things. Now, all of a sudden, that, that made it kind of a compelling problem to, to maybe address. But what made it a really um, kind of a, a, a perfect storm of problems was this third thing, is that we also had started to get more demand on this content. So before, when we would go on vacations, you know, my, my parents or my, fa my friend's family would not be as interested in knowing where we went to. You know, we'd be pushing that stuff out to them. But for the first time, we were actually being pestered for updates every now and then, and sometimes getting to, you know, escalating to levels of threats to say, you know, where are those pictures that you took last week or where are those you know, videos that you took that you promised. So, the, so, so this was a case where the demand for the content was also going up. And so here you've got a parent who's not getting enough sleep, who's trying to share all this content, and this, this demand for this content. So it felt like a, enough, enough of a problem space to like explore. So that's what I outline as the three problems that I saw that made it interesting to pursue. And so down below, I list the existing alternatives that I think people would be using. So I list some of the common usual suspects at the time. So we had products like Flickr Pro, SmugMug, uh, Apple had a mobile me product, which was not just photos that a lot of other things, but it was also, uh, these are all, these are all, all options we were considering. And uh, so I list those out as possible existing alternatives. And of course, Facebook. And the big concern there that we had uh, personally was that a lot of the privacy concerns, especially with, with things like baby photos. So we still list it out there because we, because I, uh, I know that people would use it, but I, 
I'll show you later what I thought the usage rates would be across all of those and what we actually found out. But this is, again, what we thought at the time. So we list those out. On the far right, um, we have parents who are the customers, so they are the creators, and I kind of have a little label. And so if you're using the hashtag feature, you might actually can, you, that's something you can annotate there, and make creators be a hashtag, and then everywhere you put that, you will see the color change on the canvas. And then um, the other parts, the other users of the system would be really the family members and, and friends. And these would be um, viewers or users of the system who are, who are consuming this content, and not necessarily the creators and not necessarily the payers. So the, the model, that I'll talk about business model in a second, but we had envisioned charging for this product and having parents be the customer. So that's, what, that's why they're up there. And then the early adopter that we had in mind <clears throat> was not just parents, but parents with young kids, because we felt that as kids got older, the amount of sharing, we, they'd be in the same boat that we were, is that they probably would take pictures, but not as much as, um, as, as having that new baby in the house and having that, that demand for the content. So we felt that would be a, a, a good definition of the early adopter. So there's an example of how you kind of take, that, uh, take those concepts and turn it into that early form of a canvas. So I'll probably give you 30 seconds here to kind of jot down, if you haven't already, some of these things. And at the end, as I said, I'll have more time for you to spend on these. And we'll also walk around to help you fill those out. But um, it, it may be helpful to like jot something down while we're in the context, because we're going to go through all nine boxes. And so some of this information may not, uh, may, 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 may not retain at the end. So if you take a few seconds now, it'll be, it'll be easier to jot it down now. <coughs> You like it better, right? Yeah. yeah, we're actually building a poster as well, which we're which we we thought we'd bring here. If you're interested in hanging it up somewhere and use use uh, sticky notes, that works pretty well too. Sorry, um, we have a we have a version of it we can send you. Like it's you'd have to print it yourself, but yeah, we, we didn't we didn't have the chance to print it out ourselves and put it up. Yeah, so there are lots of options where there's like with vinyl you can do things where you can even write on write on top of them. So I mean, if there's enough interest, we'll 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 even like help to fulfill those orders if that makes sense. If that's a product there, <laughs> but for now it's just kind of self self. We have the we have a version you can just print out anywhere at a Kinko's and and make your own poster. How much do they want to pay? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll do the customer discovery on that in the break. And so I, I think I mentioned this early on, but as you're filling these canvases, um, if, if some of you want to come and present it afterwards, kind of prepare yourself, because I am going to, at the end of this, ask uh, one or two of you to come and share your canvas with us, depending on how we're doing on time, at least one, maybe two. And we'll walk through the process of, of again, creating the canvas in a way that kind of makes the most sense. But how do you identify risk? How do you define experiments? What are the next steps after that? So just prepare you for that.